presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey, Robert, how you doing, man? Yes, good, and thank you for taking my call. I wanted to let you know that I've been a subscriber for a couple of years, just different members of your team, and I really enjoy it. But really the reason I'm calling is to express my sincerest gratitude for you providing that information information yesterday on the small business grant. I'm a small business owner and primary breadwinner for my family. And if I can get that money, it's going to really mean a lot to my family. So that's awesome. Thank you for uh, taking the time to do that. No, well, well, listen, man, we appreciate you growling a problem with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. So this is my last day with you guys, at least for the foreseeable future. Let's take a look at what we have going on today. We have the ES Mini about 0.21% currently, trading at 4,880. Of course, we've made all-time highs in the SPX and the Dow. Russell trading about 1985, up about 1.5%. The NQs sideways, 0.12%, trading about 17,460. Uh, the Dow futures trading at 38,156, up about 0.3%. The gold contract, again, not too much action going on in the metals currently. Um, trading down about 0.4% right now with gold contract trading at 2,021 and 40 cents. Uh, same with silver. Silver's down a little bit more today, uh, down about 2.3% on some pretty decent volume as well. Copper, down about a percent as well trading about 3.74 on the contract let's take a look crude oil again we've had a volatile uh past few weeks say past month with crude oil trading up about two percent right now it's up to 74 dollars 76 cents uh it seems that a lot of the analysts and investors believe that drilling will resume or lease operations will resume in libya of course they're having a strike at one of their oil fields of course how much it actually alleviates uh, some of the supply issues and um, overarching complications kind of in world trade and uh, with some OPEC states. Uh, it's hard to say if that will bring the price down any at all, but we've been seeing some pretty wild swings really since about December 7th. Of course, it's in a tight bound from about 70 bucks to about 75, um, but every day you can see just pretty volatile movement uh, in the crude futures. Of course, looking at Tesla right now, trading still down. We're at 207. 27 that has been a march downwards for tesla since about let's see december 28th of course right there is trading about just above 26 let's see about 265 roughly and we're trading down right now at 207 uh, 40 down about 2.25 percent today so dynamics back up of course <laughs> stock never stays down for too long trading at 115.18 of course we're off from a high of about 128 almost 130 uh, quite a lot of volume coming up as well. That movement down on lighter volume is, uh, for me, I like that, especially as someone who wants to invest in this stock. The dollar trading at 103.35. Uh, we are not getting any kind of big movement to the downside uh, with the dollar yet, so we'll have to kind of wait to see what happens with them, or excuse me, with that. QQQ is at 421. Uh, Meta today down slightly. Disney up 2.2%. Apple up 1.26%. Okay, let's talk about Gilead. So they're working on a lung cancer, uh, excuse me, drug. Obviously, you can tell from this movement, it did not work. Let's look a little bit about that. This is called uh, Trodelvi. That was the drug that was uh, being tested. It fails in lung cancer and raises new questions on antibody drug conjugates in uh as a whole. So let's take a look at this here. Uh, Gilead Sciences said Monday at the Trodelvi, it's a quote unquote smart bomb medicine that combines an antibody with chemotherapy, did not significantly extend the lives of patients uh, with me uh, metastatic small, excuse me, non small cell lung cancer when given after first treatment failed. Okay, the result from a closely watched study called Evoke 01 uh, will be seen as a disappointment by many investors and oncologists alike. Uh, these kind of antibody drug conjugates are really new on the market, and uh, there's a lot of hope that they may be able uh, to kind of resolve uh, some very resistant cancers. Um, 
mm. but at least in the case of Gilead today, uh, it, it did not really uh, work. So we can see right now we're down about 11.2% in Gilead, and again, that is on some significant volume as well. Let's take a look. We spoke about Plug last week. They had dropped something significant. Uh, let me get off the yearly here. Let me get like a one month. Obviously, we had some big volume coming down here, even bigger volume. Again, it was kind of a fighty day right here. Uh, we're up now. When we were speaking about them last, last week, they were down uh, significantly. I can't remember the exact percentage, uh, but we're up about 4% today. Uh, they had pretty bad earnings. Um, they were trying to offer more stock uh, to get some more money. Obviously, that dilutes the equity, and people don't like that. Okay, so let's take a look at why this is going up. And this is what's kind of insane about this market currently. All right, as of 10 a.m., this was up about 13%. Of course, we've kind of tempered throughout the day right now of about 4.10%. Um, they're hosting a business update tomorrow. And for some reason, a large amount of people are expecting that they're going to have a positive outlook for the company. I tried to look up what, you know, what was, was kind of fueling that conversation and, and I, I couldn't find anything uh, you know they have a okay they're getting a huge influx of cash about 1 billion that's great but that was from issuing new shares um, I, I guess you know that ensures that the company persists for a while longer um, but I'm not really sure where the conversation around some massive update uh, that they're gonna give at their meeting tomorrow is coming from so uh, I guess maybe people were seeing this as very low I mean it was super cheap it got sold off you know, a, a lot last week. Um, and so maybe they're just kind of taking their bets in it. Uh, I'm not really seeing what is so positive about this stock right now. Um, but of course, the market is really what's right. Let's take a look. Um, you know, I talk about, uh, give me a second, some cybersecurity companies uh, a lot. I talk just about the industry and its whole. Uh, Sentinel One got an upgrade earlier. This is uh, fantastic news for the company. We'll get off the one month. Uh, we'll go on the yearly, up about 5.27% today. Uh, they are also acquiring an Indian cloud security platform. It's called PingSafe. It's for $100 million and is dubbed the largest acquisition in Indian cybersecurity startup. Okay, but this is great for Sentinel One as well, expanding kind of their operations. Uh, the deal is expected to close the first quarter of the fiscal year of 2025. Last year, it raised $3.3 in seed funding. This is the PingSafe company. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good for it. Sentinel One has the AI security platform, which is very positive, uh, and I think really the future uh, for cybersecurity. And um, if you're interested in getting exposure to cybersecurity, um, like I said, check, we, we went over Fortinet, went over Juniper, uh, which may be, or is getting acquired by Hewlett Packard, um, Cisco, and Sentinel One. Check these out, do your due diligence, as everyone should as an investor. Um, but just in the news today, Sentinel One is doing pretty well. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Steve Rose. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. They're saying uh, it must be cold and insane peak as that heavy sweatshirt. All right, yeah, it, it's we're we're like uh, we're like low sixty. But in my defense, I'm I'm born and raised here, so I mean anything below sixty five, and and we're dressed up like this. Uh, I'm planning a weekend trip to Chicago next month to see one of my buddies from college, and I have no idea what I'm going to do out there. So yeah, any hand me downs? Let us know, Jacob at tfnn.com. Anyways, I believe we have Steve Rhodes on. Uh, Steve, can you hear me? I can, and I'm, I'm bundled up hey. too. I've got, a, I've got a sweatshirt on too. I'm freezing. You look great, Steve. That's that's the Florida boy special right there. I am freezing. <laughs> you, you, you you set you set uh, 65 as uh, yeah. I use it. It gets below 70. That heat comes yeah. on. So. Exactly. And every uh, as a rule of thumb too, everyone in Florida their their winter outfits just for some reason look significantly better than our summer outfits yeah i got a old t-shirt on and khakis or something in the winter time it's you know it's like the I whole runway you. so I hear you. steve I hear what you. are we uh, what are we looking at today well so you know it's a it's a rally party so as everybody That's knows right. the dow the s p 500 the nasdaq have made a new all-time high so i thought we'd start by taking a look at this chart just to get a perspective uh so the dow is in the upper left hand side uh, shows a new all-time high that we're trading at. Next to that, we can take a look at the Shanghai index, so we get a feel for China. Now, in the case of China, so first, with regard to the Dow, we're trading above last year's high. Whenever you trade above the high of a prior bar out there, or certainly whenever you trade above the prior year's high, it is bullish, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it can't top and pull back down, but you are totally in breakout mode. So if we take that, Jacob, and we apply that to what's going on over in the Shanghai, we can see we're trading below last year's low. Mm -hmm. So it's very bearish over there. Yes. So we don't see global capital moving over to uh, the Shanghai. If we take a look at the Nikkei, it's approaching, but it's approaching its high. That takes us all the way back into uh, 1990 out okay. there. So it's on its way up there, but it's still not an all-time high. Neither is the FTSE, neither is the uh, DAX. Uh, over in Australia, the uh, Aussie 200 index made it within 10 cents today, this morning, earlier this morning, uh, from its all-time high out there. But the point here is that the breakout that we are seeing is inside the U.S. 
indices out here. I see. And if we in this chart here, what uh, we do, it's really important to understand, especially when we take a look at the uh, large cap indice. So the Dow, the Dow gets trashed a whole lot. But where the Dow shouldn't get trashed is understanding how it's trading in major currencies out there. And so on the upper left hand side here, we've got the Dow priced in dollars. Next to that is priced in euros. Today made a new all time high. This is a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. We've got a new all time high in terms of yen, a new all time high in terms of Aussie dollars, a new all time high in terms of Swedish Corona, a new all time high in terms of Great British pounds. We're not at a new all time high in terms of francs. Uh, the Chinese uh, yuan, the renminbi, uh, renminbi, and the uh, Canadian loonie out there. But the point of those first, uh, the, the first two rows out there, is this is a rally. This is a global rally that we have going on, and that is the best kind of rally you could possibly have. In other words, you've got constituents in different countries uh, that have their local currency, and they're they're investing. They are buyers. Of the Dow, yeah. they are not sellers of the Dow. You could make a case that maybe you know in one or Canadian loonies or something, but with regard to being at all-time highs in these currencies, that is a very bullish signal. Now, all bull runs come to an end, but that's a very bullish signal and really important for people to understand out there. Got to take a look at these instruments, how they're priced inside the major currencies. The S&P 500, by the way, this is the chart for the S&P. It's also at new all-time highs for euros, yen, pounds, Aussie dollars, and Swedish krona. Okay, so we've got that established, and we've got a worldwide rally that's going on. And everything looks bullish, right? Well, maybe not. So most people know that the U.S. stock indices are weighted, right? So if you take a look at the Dow, maybe the top um, 10, 11, 12 or so are about 50% of the uh, weighting inside there, inside the NDX 100. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's the top 10 or 11, 12, some, somewhere around, maybe the top 15, you get about 80, 50, more than 50% of the weighting of the indice. So when we're seeing markets that are breaking out, what I like to do, Jacob, is go to take a look at the equal weighted ETFs. So these are ETFs that we're taking a look at. The bottom row are the Qs, the Spies, the Diamonds, everything that, you know, you and I, everybody with inside TFNN take a look at. Right. If we, the top row, though, is the equal weighted ETF. What you like to see is you like to see the equal weighted ETF confirming what we see in the weighted side. That gives us a broader rally. Mm -hmm. So that would be a simple signal. Well, in the terms of the QQEW, the equal weighted ETF for the Qs, it is at a new all-time high. In terms of the equal weighted Dow, which is EDOW, it is also at new all-time highs. But the issue is with it inside the S&P 500. The SPY, absolutely at a new all-time high. But RSP, folks, that is the equal weighted ETF for the S&P 500. And not until it gets to a new all-time high and starts trading above it can we really say that we've got one heck of a rally par uh, party going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a good way to look at it, huh? Okay. And in the case of the RSP, the equal weighted ETF, it's trading with inside its profiles out there in its first resistance level, folks. Again, RSP is a ticker symbol, is 157.38. If price begins trading above 157.38, we're getting closer to a uh, breakout message, but it has to take out its all time high from earlier, uh, uh, from the middle of uh, last month out there. So this is really important for everybody to take a look at and understand. The RSP, uh, like I said, it's not at its all time high, but when we take look at the daily weekly and monthly time frame each of them still have a topping pattern so in the case of the daily time frame it's both a wave number seven that's the letter g on my system it's a very small portion of the chapman wave it's also got a roads momentum indicator top in the case of the weekly it's a td9 count top that's out there in the case of the monthly chart it's a roads momentum indicator top that's out here so it's got those tops in place not until those levels of resistance get taken out will i have a uh, comfort level that we truly are getting ready to break out and move to new all-time highs a second non-confirmation, and this one is going to be much easier to resolve uh, than the RSP, at least immediately, is the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. And, uh, Jacob, that's the uh, third panel that we're, or the third area inside this chart, really in the middle out there. Okay. And when it gets down to minus 150, and this is, folks, what this is, this is the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. When, get, when that reading or that ratio gets down to minus 150, you are in oversold territory. Well, a couple of days ago, uh, middle of next week, uh, last week, uh, we got to that, we got well below minus 150. And what the New York Stock Exchange is doing is working off its oversold condition. 
Only closes above this zero threshold line, this little red line that's going across it, would tell us that buyers are the ones in control. So there's two signals at the moment right now that just say caution. There may be a third or set of signals out here, and that comes from the intraday charts for the ES Mini. And here, the daily time frame chart shows a Rhodesman Dominicator signal. That's a black diagonal line. Now, folks, that is not a top. The top comes when we gen when it generates a bearish reversal candle. So that's one thing to be looking for. Turns out the five-hour time frame chart has a wave as a TD9 count top. So that is still in place out there. The four-hour chart, no top just yet. The two-hour chart has a Rhodesman Dominicator top. The 60-minute has a Rhodesman Dominicator top, as do each of the other intraday time periods. But here, you, people may have noticed that in the 30-minute time frame chart, it broke through a key level of support at 48.77. But, Jacob, that lasted for one bar. And one bar break of support, no way that that's a true breakdown out there. So, folks, uh, we've got a true breakout that's going on. We don't have confirmation from the equal-weighted ETF for just the S&P 500, the RSP out there. And we've got some signals just simply to pay attention to. So uh, tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. to the Trader's Edge Show. That's right, Steve. Thank you so much, as always. You bet, Jacob. Take care now. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. If you liked that last interview with Steve Rhodes, well, he's on with Tom every Monday, about 15 past the hour. And you can go take a look here at his Mastering Probability newsletter. All right, and uh, this is this is a good write-up. If you want a very thorough overview of what's going into the market, and this is a daily uh, update, 
you got to check out the mastering probability. And one of the things I want to say, of course, the classic, you know, 30 day money back guarantee. If it's your first time subscribing, check it out. 30 days, if for whatever reason, it doesn't fit your style. We go ahead and we, uh, we refund you totally. Not only do you get the newsletter in, in all of our newsletters, but you also get a lot of the workshops that I get with. So a lot of our hosts, uh, Steve included, will do the subscriber workshops. So if you're a subscriber to the newsletter, you get, um, you know, essentially we do live webinars, right? And then we record all of those and uh, they are uploaded for viewing afterwards. So again, you don't just get the newsletter, okay? You get all this other knowledge, information uh, that's been saved over the past few years. And it's, uh, it's really, you know, it, it's, it's worth its cost. So check that out. That is Mastering Probability Newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Let's take a look. Spirit <laughs> up about 22% today. Wow. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on in Spirit if my computer responds. Hmm. Give me one moment, guys. Well, we can go back to Spirit. Let's talk about this instead. Microsoft became, we'll go back to Spirit. We definitely will. And what's going on with them? Uh, let's take a look at Microsoft currently uh, became the uh, biggest company in the world. What happened? Okay, they are being targeted right now. And this is tying in again with what is the world going to look like going forward? Well, they uh, just suffered a massive attack by a nation state actor. Now, nation state actor is going to be uh, essentially funded hackers. Uh, they hacked into high-level corporate emails. A lot of executive emails were read. Let's take a look at what they said. This is what it looks like when a company is trying to kind of tell people what happened. The Microsoft security team detected a nation-state attack on our corporate systems on January 12th, 2024, and immediately activated a response to investigate, disrupt malicious activity, mitigate the attack, so on and so forth. As part of our ongoing commitment to responsible transparency, as recently affirmed in our Secure Future Initiative, uh, we are sharing this update, which uh, is very commendable, uh, because a lot of times I think companies will stray away from this. They're not, they're not required uh, to disclose any of this, you know, which, I, which I think is kind of a blind spot in our society. But this is, you know, it's going just beyond disruption, you know, to profit, kind of disruption to operations. I mean, this is, I mean, they're being targeted because this is a international company. Uh, they're in charge. I mean, a lot of the world runs off their operating system. And uh, it, it just shows you kind of the scope. Like this isn't just, you know, people hacking businesses, trying to get credit cards or, you know, other kind of identifiable, not, <laughs> identifiable information. I mean, this is very large, right? They're hacking the emails of these guys. Um, so that's some big news that happened there. Again, you know, we were looking at, uh, Sentinel One, they have a good AI for cybersecurity. Uh, we were looking at Fortinet, Juniper, all these. Take a look again, do your due diligence uh, because the amount of cyber attacks is increasing. I was speaking last week how uh, JP Morgan is dumping a ton of money um, into uh, essentially padding themselves from these things. I think they had an 800% increase in cyber attacks on their systems uh, just last year alone. And with the advent of, of AI and uh, more complex programs, these will only uh, increase, especially with more people on the internet around the world, uh, these attacks will increase. So that's just some interesting uh, news with Microsoft. I'll talk a little bit about two that they are now the, uh, they have the world's largest market capitalization. Let's take a look here. They have the assets to remain there for a while. Let's take a look. So Microsoft eclipses Apple and relies on its diversification through artificial intelligence in the midst of fierce competition with Apple. Microsoft has in recent days crossed the 2.9 trillion mark in market capitalization. And here's the thing, right? Uh, they are investing a ton of money. They are right at the forefront with chat GPT, uh, you know, open AI's famous generative AI. Uh, for its part, Apple's experiencing a slight decline caused by concerns of the slowdown. Okay, Apple's also dealing um, some other issues uh, regarding some of their tech, uh, namely they have to get rid of the heart monitor on it uh, due to some kind of patent disagreement. Uh, Microsoft has a diversification of activities. This is through their application suite, OS, cloud. This is gonna be massive going forward and they mix cybersecurity with their cloud as well. Um, I, I think Azure is um, 
when a lot of these other countries around the world start kind of modernizing and getting into the whole fray, and, and it is inevitable that this will occur, um, and, and probably a lot quicker than we expect as well. You know, I don't see them really relying on homegrown kind of cloud systems. I, I, I see them essentially kind of renting it out. I mean, right, I mean, this is cloud as a service now, which is, is pretty massive, or storage as a service. It's, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, obviously, gaming is massive. They acquired Blizzard recently uh, and artificial intelligence uh, we spoke about. And, uh, yeah, they've diversified significantly well. And I, I think, too, you know, looking at some of the other big tech companies, you know, we talk about Meta, we talk about Apple, um, AWS, or excuse me, Amazon, I wouldn't just call that tech. You know, that's a lot of things going on there. Uh, but you've seen a significant decrease in the amount of uh, workers in some of their more peripheral businesses. And, of course, you've seen a little bit of that in Microsoft as well. Uh, but, but I think Microsoft has pretty adeptly nailed what their streams need to be going forward. And they're doing quite well for it. And we see they're, they're the largest company in the world now, uh, at least for the time being. I think that's pretty interesting. Let's take a look at Fisker moving forward, up almost a dollar, right? 92 cents, up 17.75%. Okay, so what happened? Going parabolic today, shot up. This was at like up 40% almost today. That was pretty insane to see. In a regulatory filing, Fisker announced that it has reached an agreement with an institutional investor uh, that could save the company some money. Among other things, the institutional investor has waived off any remedies it could have used on Fisker for failure to file its quarterly report in a timely manner. It has also released all liens on intellectual property granted in connection with Fisker's transactions with an automotive partner. Most importantly, the institutional investor has waived off all financial covenants on Fisker's cash reserves, which means the EV maker can now use that cash to run its operations. Okay, I still think Fisker's probably in a bad situation. Let's take a look. They had roughly $527 million in cash and cash equivalents of September of last year. Okay. Fisker's cash balance was down from about $737 million. Okay. Again, I don't... I think that EVs coming into a rough segment, at least in the next year or two, um, of course, I do believe that's the future going forward. This company's not really poised to be at the top of that now. Uh, yeah, they make more luxury cars as well. Um, but, I mean, the stock price speaks for itself, right? I mean, we're at 92 cents. It's, a, it's in a rough start. Uh, Fisker started to leave, delivering its ocean SUVs in the U.S. in June 2023, but it failed to ramp up production as planned. In nine months, that ended in September 30th, 2023, Fisker delivered a little over 1,100 EVs and generated 72 million in revenue. It also, however, incurred a gross loss of about 33 million and a net loss of 298 million. I think they're still in a rough spot. But if you were holding on to Fisker at any low point, well, I'm glad you made 16.84% today. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. 
markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. All right. So we talked a little bit about gold earlier. Uh, I talked a little bit about metals every time I've been on here. Um, of course, we had Tim Orr to come on and talk about his outlook for metals going forward, too. If you missed that, check out last Thursday's archive on uh, TFNN. Uh, it's a YouTube channel. Um, it's pretty good insight. You know, there's not a lot of the action that's been going on here. Um, you know, it just hasn't been super attractive. And so let's take a look. We have UBS. Um, they're actually seeing a 10% spike for gold this year, uh, even with the rate cut speculation swirling. So let's take a look at what they're saying. Uh, essentially, gold prices could close the year as much as 10% above current levels. Now, anyone can say that, right? But let's take a look at what UBS is saying. Uh, UBS note on Friday describes recent price, price moves as minor in the context of the precious metals 15% climb through 2023 and said the power of the Federal Reserve's policy pivot should not be underestimated. Bullion remains above the psychological level of $2,000 per ounce, uh, $2,000. And the UBS strategist said forecasting a rise to 2250 per ounce by the end of the year. And that is actually, I think, pretty close to what we were looking at here as well. Uh, analysts at Scotiabank retained a more cautious outlook, uh, but revised their price guidance higher. Uh, in a Monday note, they said that they had adopted higher gold and silver prices for this and next year and moved their year-end gold forecast to 2000, uh, to about 1900, excuse me, from 1900 previously. Okay. It's weird because you have a lot of unexpectancy, unexpectancy, like uh, unpredictability in uh, the world right now. I know you have some people like Larry Fink saying that a lot of that is um, what's kind of soaking all that up is Bitcoin. But we've also seen a decrease in price of Bitcoin as well. Um, obviously, there's just a lot of volatility with that, with what was going on with the SEC. Um, I think probably majorly you're having some issues in China, which might affect um, overall, uh, some of the gold prices here, uh, but it'd be really nice to kind of see it pump off. We take a look at the GDX right now. I mean, you know, we're down. This is some big volume as well. We're moving a little bit lower, but we're just kind of inching slower, about 27.62 right now. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of juice left to go high, or excuse me, go lower. Um, of course, that is always difficult to say. But again, I would check out that interview uh, with Tim Ord that I had on Thursday. Of course, too, you check out the gold report uh, from Tom O'Brien to get some better insight on that. Let's take a look here. Some interesting thing going on with the economy. It is so weird, right? I, I think a lot of people see it as negative. You have a lot of people now saying that uh, they have higher faith in it. Of course, we're at all time highs right now in the S&P uh, 500. And um, I still think there's on large like a worker shortage for a lot of people. Let's take a look here. Walmart is actually going to uh, raise the salary. That's for store managers. So let's take a look. 
Workers at America's largest private employer will soon be getting raises. Walmart announced last week that the average salary for store managers will go from $117,000 to $128,000 a year. That is almost a 10% increase. Uh, they'll also be eligible for bonuses up to 200% of base salary. Uh, a spokesperson for Walmart told NBC News in an email that there are approximately 4,700 Walmart stores in the U.S. and that each store has a store manager. Walmart said about 75% of its field management teams began their Walmart careers as hourly workers. It's interesting. Uh, not only responsible for exceeding customer expectations, that's fine. That's nice when you can see uh, a company kind of uh, retain employees and have them move up through it. So I think that's some good news as well, uh, kind of catching up with some wages. Of course, we're looking at some figures, uh, I think about two weeks ago, uh, that said that uh, wage increases actually has done an okay job of uh, keeping up with inflation. We can take a look at this moving forward. All right, let's see. Sorry, I'm having just some issues with the computer, but we'll get that going. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to throw this up here. We'll talk a little bit about this. Of course, we had a lot of these Bitcoin ETFs pop up. Uh, you know, XBTF, that is going to be down about 2.51%. BTO, excuse me, BITO, uh, down about 3.43. And then Bitco, down about 3.9%. 19 percent uh bitcoin is down as well let me get you that exact uh number at least it was earlier when i was looking at it yep we're down about 3.44 percent today trading about 40,270. this will be as interesting it might be the next step for these are going to be stable coins okay and the idea of stable coins is you're supposed to have one unit uh that's pegged directly to uh essentially the dollar right so one unit equals one dollar so let's take a look here uh, the CEO of Circle, the company behind popular stablecoin USD coin, sees a strong chance that laws for stablecoin issuers like itself will come through in 2024. Stablecoins, which allow traders to move in and out of crypto, uh, it's kind of a weird generalization, but anyways, uh, are a $135 billion market. Uh, but they're for the most part unregulated. The U.S. is yet to pass federal crypto regulation, even as jurisdictions around the world are approving new crypto-focused laws. Uh, Circle's boss and co-founder hopes that things will change. Speaking with CNBC at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, Allaire said regulatory developments around the crypto industry were picking up around the world and that the U.S. was more than likely to approve laws for stable coins than before. You're seeing desire from the administration, desire from the Treasury, from the Federal Reserve, uh, by both chambers of Congress and certainly on a buy. Okay, but I think even more so as well, you're seeing a lot of these private equity firms and uh, big financiers getting into it as well. Digital dollars are happening around the world. Other governments are regulating dollar digital currencies before the United States. And um, that would be kind of cool to see, I think. And I, I see something like a stable coin kind of probably being a little bit more palatable uh, for legislators. Usually they're not as volatile and it, it kind of makes a little bit more sense to people, uh, I think, who aren't, you know, kind of like ingratiated in that world uh, currently. So I think that's I think that's a good lookout for them. And it'll be kind of interesting uh, to see what happens with that. OK, we were talking a lot about the buy now, pay later thing. I wasn't really a big fan of it. And uh, it looks like there would be some issues here as well going forward. Uh, let's take a look at the key points here. Buy now, pay later helped fuel record holiday spending online, surging 14% year over year. But now those bills are coming due. Consumers aren't sure how they'll pay them. I, yeah, with <laughs> the surge in use of buy now, pay later comes as credit card debt is at a record high and delinquency rates have nearly doubled over the past two years. It is unclear how often buy now, pay later bills go unpaid, uh, but the people who use the services are more than twice as likely to be delinquent on other credit products, such as car loans or mortgages, which is pretty insane. Starting January has arrived and other installments are starting. Uh, the individual in this article isn't sure how they're going to pay them off. Been selling clothes. I mean, this is like, I. what I would really like to see is, is again, like how much loss a lot of these companies are getting from that and, and whether or not they're somehow able to write this off. Um, I would assume there's probably not any collateral at all with this, but We'll take a look here in an era where persistent inflation and record high interest rates are shaping financial decisions for many shoppers. Uh, the service helped fuel a boom in overall online spending. Of course, we had a massive uh, year, really, in like November and December. Uh, a lot of it, you know, attributed to this kind of uh, structure. And it topped out about $220 billion from November 1st through the end of December. $222 billion.
During the season, by now, pay litter usage hit an all-time high, rising a staggering 14% from the prior year and contributing $16.6 billion to online spending. Online Cyber Monday alone, by now, pay litter use spiked nearly 43%. Wild. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I was taking a look on the break here. Hold this up. I can't remember when it was. I think I think probably earlier last year. You know, we were talking about a huge increase and in, in kind of lost over retail theft. Okay, this is going over cargo theft, which is which is quite impressive here. A spike of over fifty-seven percent uh, in 2023 versus 2022. Some new data: cargo theft incidents were up more than fifty-seven percent in 2023 compared to the year prior. We're at an all-time high. Haven't seen cargo theft at this level ever. Nearly $130 million worth of goods uh, was stolen in 2023. Uh, but since reporting cargo theft is not mandatory, the amount is likely higher. Back in 2014, we were taking in 100 or so reports a month. Now we're taking in probably 220. And this really is actually kind of crazy. There are a lot of these videos that um, are circulating online, like uh, on, on Twitter and Instagram, and the, the trains that carry all the Amazon goods, and this was in California in particular. Again, I think this was like probably about a year ago. I think I remember some people also talking about it in the den. Um, 
the trains have to stop at these certain stations and the the news crew went down to kind of film what was going on because this is where a lot of the people were hitting the the cargo trains i mean the the whole track uh, i mean was just completely littered in boxes and they just they hit it they cut open the boxes see if it's worth anything if not they dump it if it is they take it and uh and they run I mean, I mean, you're talking like an entirely different layer from, from the topsoil of, of just boxes. Uh, this was all theft, and it was kind of going, you know, unprotected. Let's take a look here. Uh, Cargo Net's analysis of fourth quarter 2023 data showed a 68% year-over-year increase compared with 2022. In the first 20 weeks of 2023, we saw a 41%. Uh, compared to the 20 weeks before that, cargo theft refers to goods being stolen at any point in transit. Pretty crazy. Now, there, this is where technology comes in, and they're implementing things like Bluetooth locks, uh, which are pretty solid, um, and, you know, a bunch of other risk monitors. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Tom will be back with us tomorrow. Uh, it's been great being with you these past few days. Have a great rest of your day.